We are proud to announce the 2019 Palisade Global Hard Asset Conference, taking place on Jackal Island from May 16th to May 20th. Speakers confirmed include one of the most successful venture capital fund managers within the resource space, Marin Katusa. Legendary mining investor Paul Matizek, former hedge fund manager Mike Alkin, and CEO at US Global Investors, Frank Holmes. All these guests, plus many more to be announced. Sign up now for more details and to be included in our special guest list. Join us in Jackal Island. Become part of a growing number of investors who are ready to take advantage of a coming resource boom. Welcome back to another episode of Palisade Radio. I'm your guest host, Karem Mutlu. And on today's show, we have Denny Laviette, who is the president and CEO of Goldspot Discoveries. Welcome back to the show, Denny. Thanks, Karem. Pleasure to be here. Let's start by talking about peak gold. Before the call, we were having a discussion about peak gold within the industry and how there are a lack of big discoveries. Can you give us your thoughts on this and what this means for the industry going forward? Yeah, so we're really at an interesting time in the space. I think that uh, what happened in the last bull market is, um, you know, we, we were faced with a problem. A lot of the easy deposits were found. Deposits were getting deeper and deeper, harder to find. As an industry, we're spending huge amounts of money to explore and really not finding anything as a result of all that expenditure. And so the resulting deposits um, found uh, uh, from all this expiration is, uh, expenditure were really dri- dwindling here. And, uh, and that's really, it's, it's just, it's a peak gold is an issue, but really what, what it is is it's peak discovery. And that happened in 2010. And so uh, all this money beyond that point was being spent and nothing was being found as a result of very few deposits and, and, and new things were being found. And so what was going on? And so basically what, what, what was happening in the space was uh, we were spending this money on new technologies, uh, new ways to collect data, new ways to help us find deeper and deeper and more and more complex deposits um, as part of the problem anyway. And, um, and a lot of that money was spent on uh, these technologies like geophysics and, and new innovations in remote sensing, but we were really lacking the ability to make use of that data, to really understand and work that data into our exploration models to find new things. And so that is really what I feel is the problem with the whole peak gold uh, thing, but really as an industry, uh, you know, the, the precious ounces that have been mined out to supply the market are, are on, the, on the decline. We've seen a lot of... Uh, uh, Companies, uh, uh, you know, amalgamating um, with, you know, Newmont and Gold Corp and a lot of that. And so Newmont even made it very clear that they're excited about, you know, the Gold Corp acquisition because they get a lot of, uh, you know, new district scale discovery potential that Gold Corp was able to acquire, uh, you know, in the latter part of, uh, of its existence and so on and so forth. And with Barrick and Rand Gold, that's a little bit of a different situation, a little different narrative there, but. By and large, what we're seeing is is, is the fewer and fewer ounces available. Uh, the expiration uh, side has not really picked up the slack and been able to provide the market with new uh, new discoveries and new deposits and new districts. Um, and so we're really at this crux where uh, something needs to change. Very good. So let's move on and talk about the current sentiment within the expiration junior resource space. Do you feel that perhaps after such a long period of apathy in the space that the smart money is now beginning to sense that a bottom of some kind might be in place here? The smart money in our industry certainly has sensed that. I think that a lot of it is waiting on the sidelines uh, still. Um, you know, it's, it's a funny concept of smart money and sentiment because really in our industry, um, there's a total lack of like the, the, the traditional mining investment community is super fractured. And so there's certain factions, if you will, or groups that are generating their own deals. They're only investing in their own deals and putting those to market. But there's no buyer on the other end. There's the odd, you know, retail enthusiast and, uh, and, and really this niche community that sees the bottom in on gold and sees the bottom in in the resource sector and wants to invest but it's not really enough to drive a bull market. And so even though the sentiment's on the up and up, and I think everybody senses that the bottom's in, and there's certainly a lot of signals uh, that are showing us that. I mean, interest rates, 
uh, have have turned the corner. Uh, you know, around 1170 bucks. That was that was basically the bottom. I mean, I I think that it, I I can't see any real driver as to why gold would go below where it is today. Um, but I think that bottom line is is that investors that are involved active in the investment community in the mining space are there. They're they're a little long in the tooth. They they get that this market is 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 coming and they want to place their bets. But is that's not enough money in the space to really drive, uh, you know, exponential growth and, and really drive a fervorous uh, appetite for the uh, for the for the uh, speculative mining market or exploration market. So, you know, we're really in an interesting time where I think investors need something new. I saw Damian Rem- Reynolds at uh, the VRIC uh, take a strip off of Tim Sykes. Um, and you know what, Damien was kind of right because in, in a way, uh, you know, everybody there is passionate, at, you know, at these events and they love the whole, um, you know, the, the, the goal narrative. They believe in this. They believe it's going to 5,000 or whatever have you. It's the bottoms in and, you know, there's a lot of, uh, a lot of people there that are passionate about this industry. And so, you know, when Tim Sykes was going off about how this is su- such an unsexy industry, it's boring. It sucks. It, nobody wants to invest in this. He preferred investing in a cryptocurrencies. He was waiting for the next sort of f- uh, flavor of the market to sprout up to and save cash right now to go and invest in that. And he's not wrong either. I mean, really, it is a boring market, and it sucks. If, we were, if you were interviewing me right now on uh, the crypto space, or, you know, I guess crypto space is sort of uh, – uh, been in free fall, but if you're interviewing me, say, on the medical, medical marijuana space, and I was some sort of a, you know, a talking head in that sector, uh, the video would fetch maybe 50,000, 100,000 views, right? Uh, but in the mining space, you're lucky to get a couple thousand views here. And the same goes if you have Eric Sprott or if you had, you know, um, Rob McEwen or another, or Frank Holmes or another talking head in the space. You know, this video would only fetch maybe five, six thousand views tops, right? And so that—that's how few people will care about the exploration and about mining. And that's really the problem. That needs to change. If you go and look on YouTube, some medical marijuana, uh, you know, promotional video, or uh, you know, why, how to invest in weed stocks, or. Uh, you know, Bitcoin 2.0, where, you know, where to play the, the Bitcoin space, you'll see hundreds of thousands, maybe millions of views on those videos. And so we need to attract a new audience into mining. I heard that Ethereum created over 10,000 millennial millionaires. And I can honestly say to you, I don't know very many millennials that know or care or would even be interested in investing in mining, let alone being able to read a press release, a cross-section, um, you know, recognize that X grams over X meters is a, a good number in this climate, and therefore this is a buy all day long, uh, or this person matters or that person matters. Um, so we've really got to do something as an industry to make this more appealing to a larger audience and really need to bring in a whole new generation of investor for things to really take off. As you mentioned at the beginning of the interview, it's becoming harder and harder to find bigger size deposits for mining companies. And perhaps now is the time to look at new techniques or technologies to help find bigger size deposits. So can you give us an overview of your company and the technology behind it? Sure. Well, this kind of goes back to that big data problem. Uh, so, so, or sorry, the, the peak gold problem and peak discovery. So all this money was spent. This Tremendous information was collected. The industry paid for it. Uh, we paid for this amazing library, if you will, of geophysical, remote sensing, satellite imagery, multispectral, hyperspectral data, all this information that's right there at our fingertips, IP, you name it. As an industry, we spent the money. We just didn't know how to use this information to its fullest potential. And today what's gone on uh, in the data science world with machine learning and artificial intelligence, and we've seen other industries that were ripe with data get completely transformed. Uh, so obviously the shopping side of life, uh, marketing uh, with like Facebook and targeting ads, we've seen machine learning and AI take a tremendous advantage of that. Amazon, um, you know, taking a, 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 a quant or a machine learning approach to targeting uh, the, the online shopping experience and really uh, completely taking over that whole game. 
um, and machine learning and data science was really leading the charge there. Uh, we're seeing it make inroads on the self-driving cars in the future. I know that we're going to be riding around in self-driving cars. It's an eventual truth. It's going to happen. Is it going to happen in our lifetime? Uh, almost certain, certainly. Will it happen in the next 10 years? I can't say. Uh, but I know eventually that's where things are going. Um, we've seen with Uber, Uberization in the, uh, in the uh, taxi cab business, the, you know, overnight machine learning and data science completely t turned the taxi cab industry inside out. It's completely taken over. And so that's really important for us to recognize. And so to think that in the mining space, with all of the data that we've paid to collect, all of this super sophisticated remote sensing data, that machine learning and artificial intelligence cannot find patterns in that data that we might have missed. Some, maybe uh, a recipe that equals mineralization when analyzing thousands of layers simultaneously, millions of data points across the world, historic deposits, we know where all this stuff is. And so if we could train a computer to basically analyze all this data at the click of a button, and figure out where uh, mineralization is most likely to occur, we can save the industry a whole lot of time and a whole lot of money. And so I think that was really what pushed us to, to build Goldspot, and uh, that's really what we've been doing for a lot of the big companies. Um, they're giving us all of their data. We're finding patterns in that data that, that you know, the human couldn't possibly find, and we're pointing out potential targets and potential mineralization across the projects that otherwise they may have gone unexplored for a very, very long time. So it's a, it's a, great, uh, it's a great tool. Um, it's certainly going to come into our space from the exploration side. Um, we're not only focused on that, though, at Goldspot. We're also looking at the investment side. And so what's really cool is that if you can imagine that, okay, will machine learning have a positive impact on discovery? And if the answer is yes, then imagine the positive impact it could have on investing. Uh, the quant world uh, today, um, you know, uh, a quant uh, a quant approach to investing, a quant approach to quantum mental analysis, it can analyze, uh, you know, say a uh, a press release or a, a, a four through one on one or something in a nanosecond. You know, it could analyze financials in a nanosecond. An analyst would take hours, and it could make a buy or sell recommendation instantaneously. I mean, you cannot beat that. The human cannot beat that. And so um, it's like the movie Moneyball. It's the same idea. You know, you can, you can, you can beat the casino in the, in the mining business if you have all of the different factors. Maybe there's a recipe in there that equals a, a buy opportunity or a sell opportunity that no one else sees, but a computer uh, able to crunch all the numbers, all the historic data, is able to come up with a pattern or come up with a suggestion that you know we wouldn't be able to find. So really, what we're trying to build with Goldspot is like the money ball for the mining business. And so um, if we look at so Resource Quantum Mental, this is a database that we've been building. It's two and a half years in construction, almost a million in R&D. I, uh, I linked in about it uh, today. I don't know if we call LinkedIn posted uh, about that today, but basically, um, you know, we've been building this quietly. And we've been aggregating data, every press release, every drill hole, channel sample, vol daily trading volume, financials, fundraising event, insider position, you name it, we're tracking people, we're tracking um, you know, projects uh, on a project level from companies as they change hands, we're tracking companies as they evolve. Um, we know who's relevant in this market, who's not relevant anymore. Um, you know, we could track those factions that I was talking about before that are, you know, what their activity is and when they get involved. Like, we're seeing all of this incredible information, and we've got this in the super sophisticated database we call Resource Quantum Mental, and we're training an AI system to basically find patterns in that data and make buy and sell recommendations. The objective for us at Goldspot is to pound for pound identify the best companies to make investments in, and then what we'll do as activist investors, we're going to get our entire team that we've built that's been servicing a lot of these big companies um, and bringing machine learning tools to help them uh, advance their exploration efforts. We're bringing that sophisticated team into these junior companies so that they don't have to go out and hire a million people, right? We'll bring our team in ourselves. And in exchange, we'll take a royalty. We'll, so we'll invest, we'll get a royalty, we'll bring our team in, and we're going to help make a discovery. And so with that, we're hoping to stimulate uh, the market we're hoping to create uh, a vehicle for investors, new investors, to say uh, to, to to maybe 
have some interest in investing in this in this uh, in this sector. Um, if AI can give us an edge in the investing side, if AI can give us an edge on the expiration side, certainly a younger generation will look at that and say, okay, well maybe I want to invest in this AI company that can play the mining space better than anybody else. And so that's what we're trying to build. Um, and uh, we hope that it'll resonate with new crowds, new audiences, and uh, and you know we can deliver all the tremendous upside that, that discovery presents. Um, but, you know, by and large, I believe that AI is totally transforming this industry. It's going to happen the way that we stake claims, the way that investors invest. Um, you know, everything is going to be screened uh, with machine learning and AI, and it's going to become, uh, uh, you know, a tool in everybody's back pocket. Excellent. Okay, as we're wrapping up the show now, Denny, is there anything else you wish to talk about today? Anything else you wish to discuss? Uh, only that, uh, and I'll plug this out again. Sorry for uh, for for going on and on about Goldspot and why it's best. But um, bottom line is, Goldspot's going public here next week. Um, you know, we should be free trading by then, I'm told. Uh, and uh, hopefully, you know, ticker will be spot uh, TSXV. Um, you know, it's super cheap right now. We got lots of cash, uh, so hopefully, uh, a lot of catalysts to come. Great companies, uh, many discoveries to make. So. Um, it's a very exciting time, and we hope it, uh, it will attract a whole new type of investor. Very good. Okay, well, thank you very much, Denny, and I'm sure we'll have you back on the show again later in the year. Great. Thanks, Graham. Take care. Think you understand the junior mining sector and you think that the participants in the mining sector, junior mining sector, are good people and kind people, hit the bid. How violent that term could be, it actually could be quite violent. Uh, it could be a rip your face off uh, uranium rally. And the world is always going to need raw material. It's going to need copper and gold and nickel and so forth. Totally destabilized. Hey, hey, troll, did you hear what's going on in Yemen?